Um, the medical practitioners uh, that I talked to and uh, the medical scientists that I talked to about uh, this bill and, and, and vaccines are very clear that the two things that have really done most to improve the health in our, um, in our community over the last couple of hundred years have been clean water, the availability of clean water, and vaccination. So there is absolutely no doubt um, that there is some very, very solid public health arguments behind the legislation that we have here. And uh, like many members, um, uh, I have personal experience here. I remember the enthusiasm with which my mother dragged me down to get, I think it was the Sabine uh, um, polio uh, uh, vaccination uh, when I was uh, when I was around uh, three or four. One of my first and clearest memories, because her recollection and her having lived through um, uh, with my older brothers and sisters that risk of uh, of contracting polio uh, was such a frightening aspect. And as I think I mentioned in uh, uh, when we were debating. Uh, uh, an allied piece of legislation last week. Uh, just recently, this year, a great book, uh, The Golden Age by Joan London, has come out and really captured uh, just the, uh, the social impacts um, of, uh, as well as the health impact of, uh, of that polio epidemic. And I also related um, my um, very personal experience with my daughter, who at the age of uh, three weeks uh, contracted whooping cough. Um, from uh, an unvaccinated child. So I completely and utterly support um, the principle of vaccination. But I now am going to make what I judge to be a career limiting move because I'm going to step outside a little that box of orthodoxy, that box of orthodoxy that I have followed right up until last week. Um, to when I was contacted by some people and who, uh, having uh, seen my speech, suggested that I might want to look at some of the other science. And I have done so, and it is, I don't want to depart from the standard script because I do support vaccination and I actually do support us requiring uh, there being an element of, uh, of, uh, of uh, incentive and uh, uh, to be placed into the system to ensure that we do have a proper coverage. That, that, and, and I'm not contesting in any way that what we've done in polio and what we've done with diphtheria, what we've done with whooping cough, even though whooping cough is becoming a little more complex, uh, and what we've done is measles is anything other than judged to be a good thing. But I have actually, I, I, I've sat in this place and listened uh, to it is that this is a, tr a black and white issue, that you've got to be totally and utterly in one way, otherwise you're an anti-vaxxer, and that the science is unequivocal. Now, I want to just quote, and these are all people that support vaccination, but I just want us to start being a little less condemning of those people that have their concerns, and let us, in fact, be a little bit more scientific. Let's. <laughs> Not always, when contradictory evidence comes in, presume that we've just got to we've just got to amend the hypothesis um, and have high, auxiliary hypothesis that will help us um, patch up and bolster the principal hypothesis. But from time to time, we have to be prepared to think outside to think that this data may have to really be seriously considered and, uh, and cause us to, to look at the paradigm. Now, I'm going to quote people. These are not crazy, unscientific trolls uh, who are anti-vaxxers, and, and I do want to endorse the comments uh, of uh, some of my, uh, my, the previous speakers uh, that have, in fact, um, uh, reprimanded uh, in the severest terms those people that have been uh, trolling people like the Hughes family, who quite rightly um, have have a right and have a very very real uh, concern about vaccination. Everyone should have the ability to do this without being uh, without being vilified. 
But I want to quote here. Now, I'm wanting to quote uh, Natasha Crowcroft, um, the Chief of Infectious Diseases at um, Public Health Ontario, and her, uh, her two colleagues uh, from the University of Toronto in an article that appeared in the British Medical Journal earlier this year. And I'm going, to, I'm going to quote this at length because I think this really sums up some of the issues that we need to face. We are on a steep trajectory away from an era of inexpensive vaccines for diseases that are widespread in the absence of immunisation. Vaccines are, becoming increase, uh, are increasingly being produced for diseases that, have, that are devastating at an individual level but have less impact on population health. Moreover, the costs of developing and getting a vaccine to market are rising because of increasingly complex technologies and the, public and the public intolerance of adverse events. For these reasons, new vaccines are likely <coughs> to be less cost-effective than older vaccines and are unlikely to be cost-saving. Technologies such as searching genetic codes for possible antigens and development of new adjuvants to stimulate immune responses also bring considerable uncertainty about safety and effectiveness. It may take many years for adverse event, uh, events caused by vaccines to be identified and confirmed, as was the case between the link between the pandemic H1N1 influenza vaccine plus adjuvant and narcolepsy. These challenges come at a time when some sections of society are less likely to vaccinate themselves or those children. Those who hesitate to vaccinate are often highly educated, well-resourced and demand respect for their perspectives. How best to reassure the public is unclear, but all the components of decision-making about vaccination programs must be high quality and transparent and should stand up to external scrutiny to sustain the confidence of both the public and health care providers. So I think there's a very clear message here. Us saying that anyone, us completely lumping anyone that has an objection or concern about a particular vaccine or a particular adjuvant into the anti-vaxxer box, I think is a very deleterious thing for the confidence that we need to have within our system. And, and I'm very concerned not to quote anyone out of context here, but I was uh, uh, a Professor uh, Collignon, uh, who is the Professor of Microbiology at uh, the Australian National University and a Director of uh, Infectious Diseases at Canberra Hospital, um, who, again, a great supporter of the principle of vaccination and one of those who you know, is very, very clear that vaccination has been one of those things that has absolutely turned around uh, public health outcomes in our community. But the professor was talking in respect to um, flu vaccines for children. And he has made a, a couple of uh, he made a couple of statements uh, to st stop two or three children going into intensive care. We had to immunise 600,000 people. We need to be very careful before we recommend universal vaccination against influenza every year, until we have better data. Otherwise, we'll be talking about faith-based medicine instead of evidence-based um, medicine. And uh, Professor Collin goes, uh, he was very surprised that when he made these reflections in, in his role as uh, after seeing um, healthy children post vaccine coming into, uh, into his hospital. And he was very surprised at the amount of uh, negativity uh, that, that he received um, from other health professionals. But his fundamental point of this is that we need a better system than voluntary notification to the TGA because there is a problem. Because whenever you do that, you, re you really underestimate how much of a problem there is. So that if the notification process is purely voluntary, that you get an under notification. And he says, when I interviewed families who claimed to have experienced an adverse reaction, there was a common thread. Medical professionals were unwilling to countenance the possibility, even when the symptoms were extreme and immediate, and their cases were never referred to the TGA. And I think there has been a number of comments um, on this side that perhaps one of the things that we could take out of the 
anti-vaxxer argument is that we do need a better system of notification. And, um, I note, and my, uh, my friend and colleague here, the member for Brand, will no doubt be aware of, uh, of uh, Bar Stokes, Professor Brian Stokes, a very eminent um, uh, medical bureaucrat and medical specialist in, uh, in Perth. And his, uh, uh, and his reportage, when he was commissioned by the state government to report on what happened during that ill-fated uh, 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 flu vax um, in uh, 2009, when there was a very big, uh, uh, there were so many adverse reactions coming through to this um, in Perth and indeed across Australia uh, to, for children that had had uh, that, um, that flu vax that year. And those children, yes, he was chief, I think he's just resigned, he was chief medical officer and he was actually head of the, uh, uh, the health department, but I understand uh, that he has, he's recently standing down. But anyhow, one of the, his report that was tabled in uh, the state parliament really focused on just how poor and chaotic the reporting processes were that there was an actual lack of any uh, real systemised uh, process of, of collecting that data. Now, if we want the public to have confidence in this system, we have to be prepared to set in place a rigorous reporting system. We can't continue to just say to people, oh, you've made it all up or you're wrong and it's, and it's something else. If we want, and we do want, we do want people to have confidence in the vaccination system. It is a great benefit uh, for our public health system. But we have an obligation to make sure that we are being scientific, that we are not falling into the same trap that we are accusing the anti-vaxxers of, that we are not engaging in faith-based medicine rather than evidence-based uh, medicine. There was a, uh, a, another article in the British Medical Journal by uh, an Alan uh, Cunningham, a retired paediatrician from the USA, uh, says that vaccines are among the greatest medical advances of modern times, but public health officials have become intoxicated uh, by their success and have lost their, uh, lost their sense of perspective. A case can be made for vaccinating against measles, which used to infect three to four million US children a year. But it is overreach to mandate vaccination against hepatitis, which was reported to only affect 300 children aged one to nine annually in the United States. We have got, um, uh, I asked that one of the concerns that has been raised is the, what, what is happening with the adjuvants, those things that are added to the vaccine uh, to enhance the immune response. And I asked our library to find me the latest research on the impact of these adjuvants. And I don't want to reflect negatively on the, uh, um, the, the particular person, but the piece of research that they found was conducted by a researcher of uh, uh, Flinders University in Adelaide, who also just happens to be a director of a biotech firm uh, producing adjuvants and vaccines. Now, he did. It, does, it certainly doesn't mean uh, that that should preclude him from contributing to the academic and scientific debate. Um, but I think this is an endemic problem that we have in the pharmaceutical industry, is that there is not enough independence in the system. There is not enough people researching and providing this information that are free from the taint of, uh, of uh, preferment and, uh, and funding um, by, uh, by the pharmaceutical industry. Now, as I say, we need, to, we need to get the science right here. Those that are advocating for vaccinations, like myself, believe in science. But believing in science doesn't mean that you don't allow any contrary evidence to come within your field of operation and that you demean and belittle those people that are raising those concerns. Uh, and I really do urge um, members who are uh, to actually research 
um, some of these people that are raising an alarm uh, about exactly what we're doing and whether or not all of these, uh, I think now 16 vaccinations, hepatitis B, rotavirus, uh, the human papillomavirus, whether or not what we are doing is really in the best interest and can be justified in terms of a mandated uh, public health outcome. Thanks very much.